Good evening and welcome to this special Christmas Eve service of worship here in the sanctuary of St. James Presbyterian Church in Stouffville, Ontario. It is so good to have you join us this evening for this very special time so that we can celebrate the birth of Christ together, even if we are only virtually together. It is in our sharing of a common and precious experience that we find comfort and can celebrate. We can't see each other, but we can know that we're all present. So use your imagination to remember the joys of Christmas Eve's past and to anticipate our future celebrations when we are able to be physically close together here in this sanctuary, this holy space where we worship God together. During the last four weeks of Advent, we have taken the time to light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, and to ponder the meaning of those words for our own lives. For surely we need, we, we crave hope, peace, joy, and love personally and around the world, especially during this time of pandemic. All of these themes are brought together, are personified in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, both Messiah from the Hebrew and Christ from the Greek mean anointed. Jesus is the one, God's only son, dedicated to the service of God, rendered holy by God, and called to bring good news to humanity. There is a better way to live in all circumstances. I invite Charlene and Jim Mason to come forward and lead us through the responsive call to worship. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, for to you is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Jesus has arrived in grace and mystery, renewing faded hopes and announcing peace to a weary world. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace among those whom God favors. Jesus comes among us in power and glory, inspiring joy and calling us to lives that are full of God's love. Jesus, the light of the world, is born. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our lives. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our world. God is with us. Let us pray. God, God of grace and glory, glory as, as we celebrate, celebrate this Christmas, Christmas transform, transform our hearts and our lives so that your good news is not an old story, but a fresh truth lived out every day through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first hymn this evening is number 159, Oh, come, all ye faithful. And again, it is a joy to welcome Kelly J.
Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you stir in our hearts and bring joy to our lives. You stir in our minds and bring wisdom to our thoughts. You stir in the world and bring hope to our future. You came as a little child, stirring up our praises, so now we come to adore you with the angels, to bow with the shepherds, to kneel in wonder with the wise men, to ponder your mystery with Joseph, to love and to cherish you with Mary. We come to you with humble hearts full of joy because you came to us first. You give the gift of yourself, but we are often caught up in giving and receiving our own gifts. You offer us new life in the baby born in Bethlehem, but we cloak that birth in sentiment and ignore the cost of new life. You shine in the world, but we dwell on the darkness around us. You came to us in flesh and blood, but we often fail to see you in the human lives beside us. Forgive what we have been, shape who we are, and direct who we shall be through Christ our Savior. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Walk with the assurance of God's grace and forgiveness. Be people of light and forgive one another. And Kelly's first anthem tonight is This Silent Night.
Our first hymn this evening is number 139, so let us join our voices together and sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. are people who fight against the negativities that we encounter in life, against despair, by providing a hope-filled vision of the future, something to hang on to and to work toward in tough times. Isaiah encouraged the people of his time with his words. Jim Mason will lead us in the first reading. Isaiah 52, verses 7 to 10. Let Zion rejoice. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, your runes of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Human beings are delicate creatures, especially on the inside. We need the reinforcement of positive messages, of reminders that in spite of what's happening right now, there is always the potential for better things just over the horizon. To remain balanced and able to manage the challenges of life, we need to feel hope in our hearts. 
We need hope to carry us from the present uncomfortable realities towards aspirations of what life could become, of how life would be so much better if we could move toward that beacon of light that calls us into the future. Hope gives us the courage to carry on, the wisdom and energy to take positive steps towards influencing future outcomes as best we can. How important it is that we look beyond ourselves and our preoccupation with the pandemic. None of the ills in the world before COVID-19 went away. They were only exacerbated by it. We want there to be more justice in the world and better relationships in our personal lives and in the, our cultures and our global political realities. We do seek peace for all. Isaiah was a prophetic voice in the past who understood this basic human need, a need that is as deep as our DNA. Isaiah believed that for his people, that need could be met in the person of a God-sent Messiah who would deliver the needs of the people. We interpret his messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation. We and assume this person is Jesus, the Messiah, God's son, whose birth we celebrate tonight by breaking forth into singing. Right now, Christmas 2020, our hopes are centered inwardly on our immediate needs for a vaccine and a new beginning to return to a more normal life. We don't know when that will be. It might be a year away before we take off our masks and find our ways to our favorite restaurants. Nevertheless, we cling to the hope brought by messengers about hopes for the future. Hope encourages us to wait more patiently, persevere as required, but remain optimistic and even willing to sing for joy when we hear the tidbits of good news as they arrive. And God remains present within and among us. Wherever and whenever you feel peace, know that God lies at the heart of it. There may be bumps in the road and delays in our salvation, but we can handle those disappointments because we have hope that ultimately God's vision of peace and joy and well-being for all people will prevail. But even beyond our focus on the pandemic, we need the hope of a Savior who loves us no matter what and will guide us in our individual lives, but also in the life of our congregation. We as a collective, a community of faith, seek the arrival once again of a Savior who will continue to be at the center of who we are and how we live. And we need a divine reminder that the greatest commandment is to love God and to love each other, all others, to look up from our self-preoccupation and to lend a hand and a voice and maybe some resources to those who are even suffering more. This is Christmas Eve. All things are possible. May God grant us courage and faithfulness as we think about the new song that we want to sing. Our second anthem tonight by Kelly J. is This Holy Night. Every room, every 
absorb the messages of their times, whether delivered by prophets or by newscasters, is to reshape those messages into art, poems or songs where our creative imaginations have free reign. Charlene Mason will read Psalm 98, a song that has been encouraging hearts for millennia. Psalm 98, praise the judge of the world. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy, holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord and all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it, let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. And again, make that joyful noise. New songs and joyful noises all offered to God as forms of praise. And that's what we're all about this year. Even the earth wants to chime in praise for the Creator. And why? Because a better day is coming. The Creator of the universe is coming to deliver justice and righteousness to a world that is sorely in need of them both. What would that better day look like in God's fulfilled future in our 21st century. It is hard for us to look beyond the end of our noses, encased as they are in masks, to protect us and others from the virus. But looking up, looking beyond our own personal needs, maybe it would mean that there would not be one First Nations person in Canada who had to continue drinking bottled water. Maybe we would make the changes necessary in our long-term care facilities to reduce the number of deaths among cherished and vulnerable people. Maybe it would mean that poor countries with little ability to purchase the vaccine that will save the lives of their people will find grace and mercy exercised by those countries that have a little more wealth and, more importantly, a generous heart. 
The list of descriptors of a better future is endless, but where can we envision what ought to be? There we can begin the task of moving in that direction. We are not helpless, especially when we work together as people of faith, and we are not alone. We have a God who loves us, who can actually help us to look up from our day-to-day -day challenges associated with the pandemic and guide us in better directions. We have 21st century prophets and artists who, like Isaiah and the composers of the Psalms, can clearly see and describe for us the potential of the future. It is up to us to want to work toward uh, that fulfilled vision that God offers us. In God's time, the hope that the prophets and poets had preached centuries earlier was realized. God acted. Anne Cowan will now read the Christmas story. The birth of Jesus, Luke 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was the governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to G Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there had been no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Certainly not expected. Without doubt, a surprising introduction to the world of Isaiah's prophesied savior of the world. Where we mere mortals might think that salvation may come in the form of relief from all the struggles we experience in life, like pandemics, or bigger paychecks, or better political leaders, or a marriage filled with ongoing joy and without any challenges, or perfect children, or whatever it is that we seek in that vision we have of the idealized future. Somehow God knows that those are all real issues for us, but that deep down what we really need is a change of heart. 
That's why Jesus came in the form of a human child, born into challenging human circumstances in tough times, to show us what it means when we say that God is with us. And as the angel of the Lord said, this is the good news of great joy, because it means that God is accessible to us. Jesus, the anointed one, just was just as human as you and me, not a molecule of DNA less. Hope was born in someone who at that moment in time was poor, homeless, helpless, in jeopardy from the politics of the day, and soon to be a refugee, fleeing for his very life. That's why we can relate to Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. He was born into and lived in very real human circumstances and struggled, and through his life and example, taught us how to live as people of faith. He is hope personified, and each Christmas we yearn to hear the story again, reminding us and calling us back into people of faith that still look into the future with hope. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is number 153, Joy to the World. cannot remember the birth of Jesus, filled with all the sentimentality of our culture, without remembering that the cross of Jesus, of his execution, and of his resurrection, they're all connected. What is remarkable is that the death of Jesus was remembered by anybody, given that he was just one of thousands of people executed by Romans. After his death, the vision of hope was resurrected in the experience of Jesus by more than a few as alive again and well after his death. With courage and passion, those who had known Jesus during his mortal life and those who had known only stories of him shared by his followers recognized the source of the hope that they still experienced. The vision of a world, the way God would have that world be, remained was alive and well and shared around the world and down through more than two millennia. We are the beneficiaries of the faith and courage and hope of all the generations that have preceded us. We are indeed blessed. 
Jim Mason will now share the words of the epistle to the Hebrews. Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 4. God has spoken by his Son. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. God bless to us these readings of your holy word. We're here to acknowledge and celebrate the birth of Jesus, but we cannot forget the child in the manger will become the savior on the cross. Members of those early churches in the decades after the death and resurrection of Jesus continued to look back to the words of the prophets, the hopes of the people, and see the defining acts of God. Jesus is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. We remain people of hope. We retain God's vision of what life could be and should be. And where and when we can, we are committed to helping bring about that vision. Our hope is strengthened through prayer. We know that it is God's changing of our hearts and minds that will make all the difference in the world, in our own personal lives, and in the well-being of all people. We know that God loves us, loves all people equally. And by staying connected to God, by prayer and by pondering the desires of God's heart for us, we can continue to be rooted and grounded in love. We need Christmas every year to remind us of God's love for us, of Jesus' life and sacrifice for us. It doesn't make all the problems and challenges and issues go away, but it does empower and enable us to deal with them, remaining strong in spirit and with our eye on that vision of the future into which God leads us. Thanks be to God. Amen. O Holy Night was first composed in French in 1847 by Placide Capot, a wine merchant and poet from southern France, and was set to music by his friend Adolphe Charles Adams. It was commissioned by the local parish priest who wanted to celebrate the renovation of the church's organ. By many reviews of favorite Christmas carols, this one is ranked as number one. Here is O Holy Night by Kelly J. and Kayla Ruiz.
Let us pray. God of hope and healing, as you came to us in love as the Christ child in Bethlehem, so we come to you with love and concern for our world. In this time of quiet and contemplation, we remember families that live close to the edge of survival, worrying about where their next meal will come from and where they will find shelter. Those who will spend Christmas alone or in hospital or weighed down by grief. Those who work tonight while we rest. Those who have lost their sense of joy and wonder and whose vision is clouded by cynicism or despair. Those who face the year ahead with fear and anxiety because of the pandemic and the uncertainty that surrounds us. We also remember those who celebrate the birth of a new life, a new love, or a new way of being, and are feeling grateful and filled with joy. And those whom we have loved and who loved us, and who now dwell in the eternal joy of your presence. In deep gratitude for all the gifts of this life, we gather our voices and pray the prayer that the child of Bethlehem taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. Often, the very best gifts are given quietly, even anonymously, and yet such gifts have the power to change lives. God's gift in the Christ child arrived in a small town, a humble stable, to a couple that no one invited in. And still, that gift today keeps changing lives. Our gifts to God this Christmas share in that miracle. Thank you to those who contribute to the missions and ministry of St. James Presbyterian Church by way of pre-authorized remittances, mailing a check, or through a deposit and an online e-transfer. Thank you also for your generosity toward all the other worthy causes that need our help, organizations focused on alleviating ongoing suffering of all kinds. Let us take a moment to express our gratitude to God and to ponder the joy of this Christmas Eve.
Let us pray. Generous and loving God, your gift to us in Christ Jesus still draws us to the manger and opens our hearts with wonder. Bless our gifts in his name so that they may draw others to your love to find the blessing that we have discovered in the one born for us. Amen. It is our tradition here at St. James to dim the lights at this time and to share the light of the Christ candle with everyone. If you have a candle available at home, I invite you to hold it and to light it as together we sing our concluding hymn, Silent Night. Tonight, as we celebrate God with us in the birth of Jesus, let us continue to live the lives of hope, peace, joy, and love. 
Share God's love with the shepherds that you meet out on the hillside. Let the communion of the Holy Spirit fill your heart with glad tidings like the angels. And may the Prince of Peace, born again tonight, live in your heart to comfort and challenge you as you seek to be one of Jesus' disciples. May God's richest blessings of the love of the creator of the universe, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and intimate communion with the Holy Spirit be with you this very special Christmas Eve night and forever. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Thank you for being with us this evening. Please find us on YouTube for our Christmas Day service. Lifting.